Jim Brooks and Alan Burns, everybody knows in the business what wonderful writers they are. And uh, I mean, they're just brilliant guys. Jim, of course, has gone on to be, become a, a very famous director. But <clears throat> they did, basically, they did the show for the first two years. Uh, Dave Davis and Lorenzo Music, who went on to create the Newhart Show, were also writing on the staff. But basically, it was Jim and Alan. And then Jim went off somewhere, and Alan was going to go off, and they were <clears throat> going to bring in new producers. And I had worked when I was doing the uh, Bill Cosby Show. Not the one with the kids, but the one we, the high school coach. I had worked with Ed Weinberger, who was the story editor, and I knew what a talent he was. So I suggested to, to Jim and Alan to read some of his scripts. So they brought Ed in, and he brought Stan Daniels in, and uh, Bob Ellison and David Lloyd. I don't remember when they came in, but they would come in basically uh, one night a week and and come up with great ideas. So. It turned out we had a brilliant writing staff. Uh, Treva Silverman was there for a year or two. She was a story editor one year. She was a wonderful writer. And they, and they, they brought in women, which was very unusual, women comedy writers in those days. The problem for me was <clears throat> during run-throughs, there'd be eight chairs lined up. And because sometimes one of the actors didn't quite do it the way we rehearsed it, or it just didn't work, or it didn't play, or a guest actor just didn't know his lines for there. I sometimes had to fight eight voices. Basically, it was Jim, but sometimes I'd see them all huddled together. So it was a very, it's a very difficult place to find, to be able to say, leave it alone, it'll work. It didn't work when you saw it, it'll work. Or conversely, although they think it works, geez, I'm not sure this is working. Um, my ally, on the, my savior was Alan Burns, who didn't always agree with me, but, and I didn't always agree with Alan, but it was always gentlemanly and, you know, discussion. Jim and I, we he'd see a scene one way, I'd see it another way, and nine times out of 10, they go up to the writer's room and find a third way. It was better than either or our way. But run-throughs were always the most difficult for me, much more so than doing it in front of the audience. And, you know, and I'm making it sound difficult. And it, it, it was difficult, but it was always done out of, you know, really caring. I think Jim Brooks is just a brilliant man. And, and boy, when we were in trouble, how badly we needed him. When a show was going good, you sometimes wished he didn't come around. But I had great respect for him, and I'm sure he had great respect for me, but it was just not always an easy working relationship. And, and uh, Ed Weinberger, for the first year when Jim and Alan were, were there, would sort of not make changes till Jim saw it. So sometimes we had to rehearse scenes that we knew weren't working, and we're going to be rewritten, and we'd have to we'd have to work on these scenes for two days until run through night when all the writers were there and Jim was there, and then then it would get rewritten. So eventually, I said, no, we're going to start doing run throughs on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. So we have Wednesday to really work these scenes out. So that was the big change. Even though the actors weren't ready, we started doing run throughs after two days instead of three days. So I had a day to work with the actors rather than try to put all the changes in when the cameras were there and the crew was there and they were sitting around while we were reblocking.